Please welcome IGF Chairperson Sean Pierre to the stage. to welcome everyone back to the Independent Games Festival Awards. Uh, first things first though, congratulations to all of the finalists, the honorable mentions, and everyone that submitted to be part of this year's festival. <laughs> Next, I want to thank everyone who participated in the judging and the jurying process. You know, every year I'm inspired by the dedication and the intelligence of everyone involved. And of course, I want to thank Sarah for all the amazing work she does guiding me in everything at the, uh, at the IGF. I would also like to thank our IGF Platinum sponsor, uh, ID at Xbox. as well as our gold sponsors, uh, We Made, and AMGI. Your support, your support of the show uh, it really helps keep the IGF great. You know, there are many amazing games being recognized this year. Games about food, about mystery, you know, games about love, or loss, or the absurdity of everything around us. Tonight, we are going to hear about these games, but more importantly, we are going to hear from the people who make these games. The wonderful, smart, creative, talented people who make the games industry worth celebrating. I really, really admire all of you, and I know many of you feel the same admiration for each other. And that's why it's been so difficult, extremely difficult, to see our peers not treated with the respect they deserve. We've already seen thousands of people losing work this year because they're not being valued the way they should be. People are working overtime and on weekends, only to be left behind after a game is completed. It's, it's unhealthy, it's certainly not sustainable, and the end result of this is a weaker game industry for all of us. And to be clear, this lack of respect exists all throughout the game industry in many different forms, from the billion dollar companies to the smaller independent studios, from inside and outside the games industry. Between the countless announcements of layoffs, we are also reading too many stories of how people are being systematically pushed out of the games industry rather than being empowered or recognized for their contributions. They're being made to feel like they don't belong, that the work that they're doing is not significant and instead harmful to games. This is beyond unacceptable and change is well overdue. I, I say all these things because I want us to be better in every way, every way possible. We should be an industry that pushes each other forward while rejecting everything that holds us back. This is supposed to be one of the most successful industries in the world, and it's time that we act like it. Your coworkers, your colleagues, the people here in this room, they are all people who deserve to be thought of first, not last. So, Regardless of if a nominee wins tonight, let's celebrate them. Even if you are not nominated for an award tonight, you deserve to be celebrated. And when the night is over, let's carry the celebration beyond this room, this celebration of our perseverance as an, in of an, as an industry, of our creativity as artists, storytellers, and developers, and let's continue to treat each other well 
and to demand to be treated the way we know we should be. And please remember to not only make time to care for yourself, but to check in with each, check in with each other. Thank you, and let's all give a warm welcome to our host for this year's IGF, Trinidad Black. Welcome, fellow gamers, creators, dreamers, to the 2024 Independent Games Festival Awards. Tonight, we're diving headfirst into a world where imagination knows no bounds, where every pixel and line of code is a brushstroke on the canvas of our gaming dreams. I'm your guide for the evening, Trinidad Hermita Black, the passionate executive director of the Black and Gaming Foundation. Our vision a world where every gamer, regardless of background, finds their place in the vibrant tapestry of the gaming industry. Our mission, to connect, educate, and empower black talent. Ensuring that our voices and stories are not just heard, but celebrated. But enough about me. Tonight, it's all about you. The brilliant minds and relentless spirits behind the games we love. From the brainstorming sessions that spark in the head to the heart-pounding moments of gameplay that stir our emotions, and finally to the hands that bring these digital wonders to life. This is your moment to shine. So grab your virtual popcorn and buckle up for the night of awe-inspiring creativity. Heartwarming stories, game-changing innovations. Together, let's celebrate the wonders of indie game development and the incredible journey that brings us all together. Up first, we have the best student game category. discovering a hidden gem in the vast universe of indie gaming. A testament to the grit, determination, and raw talent of student developers who dare to dream big. Picture this. Late night coding marathons fueled by caffeine and passion. Collaborative brainstorming sessions where every idea collides and sparks and the thrill of overcoming challenges that tests both academic prowess and creative genius. Student developers, you're the unsung heroes of the gaming world. Navigating through the maze of limited resources, honing your skills through the trial and error, and seeking mentorship like treasure hunters seeking unlimited loot. Your expertise in game design, programming, wizardry, Artistic finesse and storytelling magic transforms mere concepts into interactive masterpieces that captivate players and industry veterans alike. Your games are more than just projects. I said it, your games are more than just projects. They're beacons of innovation, showcasing fresh ideas, revolutionary mechanics, and the promise of a bright future in the gaming industry. So here's to late night coding warriors, like collaborative visionaries and the future change gamer, game changers. <laughs> You're the rising stars who set the stage for a new era of gaming excellence. Let's see the nominees.
The nominees for Best Student Game are Goodbye Monster Developed by Monster Team Lorg Un Rook Liu Matt Mora and Beckett Rowan Once Upon a Jester Developed by Bunta Avant Published by Crunching Koalas Pile Up, developed by Remove, published by Cutup Trick Games, Elia Gizabja, Arda Karakos, Mustafa Kalic, Gavain Gurunlu, Emil Mahir Usar. Planetka, developed by Peterka. Ram, Random Access Mayhem, developed and published by Xylem Studios, Andrew Cunningham and Toby Murray. Try Again, developed by The Rejects, published by USC Games and The Rejects, Adam Marina, Abigail Nakaishi, Adrian David Lopez, Jason Chen, and the Try Again team. The winner of the Best Student Game Award is Once Upon a Gesture. So we made a game about improvisation, and <laughs> I did not make a speech. So this is going to be improvised. Yeah. Kion? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Our publisher, Crunch and Koalas, our parents, I guess. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah. This game is like about accept acceptance and friendship, and I think we mostly want to thank our friendship together, and also Definitely. with Stein over there. So. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. We did not expect this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's give it up. Excellence in design is all about celebrating the art and science of crafting games that players can't just get enough of. It's about the meticulous planning creative brainstorming, and a deep dive into what makes gameplay truly engaging. We see endurance shining through in every step of the design process, from the initial concept to the final polish. It's about finding the perfect balance between challenge and reward. Creating smooth and immersive experiences for players to dive into. Imagine the journey of a game designer, sketching out ideas, building prototypes and playtesting with enthusiasm to refine and improve based on player feedback. It's a collaborative dance between designers and players, not only resulting in games that are not just fun, but also memorable. Expertise in game design principles like Leveling intricacies, mechanic ba mechanics balancing, I mean, this is a lot. Understanding player psychology, all come together like pieces of a puzzle to create games that captivate from start to finish. It's the artistry and craftsmanship of game designers that truly shine in excellence in design. Showcasing the passion and dedication behind every pixel and line of code. So here's to the creative minds and relentless spirit of game designers everywhere. You're the architects of virtual worlds, crafting experiences that bring joy and excitement to every player worldwide. Here are the nominees. 
Excellence in Design. The nominees for Excellence in Design are Chance of Sinar, developed by Runedisc, published by Focus Entertainment. Cobalt Core, developed by Rocket Rat Games and published by Brace Yourself Games. John Guerra, Ben Driscoll, and Aaron Sheriff. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive. Published by Annapurna Interactive, Yippie Carlson, Asker Kierkemen Strander, and Martin Festerhold. Cryptmaster, developed by Paul Hart and Lee Williams. Published by Acupara Games, Paul Hart, Lee Williams, and Surashu. Final Profit, a shop RPG, developed and published by Brent Arnold. Isles of Sea and Sky, developed by Cicada Games, Jason Newman, Dan Culver and Craig Culver. Design Award is Crip Master. Thank you. This is a this is a huge honour uh, in amazing company. So you know it's a it's a little overwhelming. I have, however, uh, written a poem. So uh, it's, no, I, ha I haven't I haven't written a poem. It's um, they wouldn't no, 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 they wouldn't let me write a poem. This is a list of names I've got to read instead. These are people who are stopping you uh, from hearing an original poem. But never mind. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I'd like to start by thanking my uh, my friend and co-developer uh, on Critmaster. Paul Hart, um, he did, Paul did all the coding, the art, most of the design, blah, 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 the easy stuff. Um, <laughs> then, uh, well done him, you know, I guess. Then um, uh, Sirashu, our amazing composer, uh, whose music makes the game seem really, you know, almost uh, as if it were made by, by professionals. It, he did a fantastic job. Um, a big, big, huge thank you to the mighty David Logan and all of his team at Akupara Games. Uh, we couldn't, yeah, we, they really are, they're the good ones. We couldn't have wished for a more wonderful, supportive, friendly group of people um, to help us making the game. Special mention to uh, Sina Breyer for not just performing in the game, but for coordinating all the VO. Uh, Kat and Arthur for sound. Marley Medak and Luca de Felice for additional art. Maxi Molina, Luca Salafranca for the Spanish localization all of the games amazing voice cast English and Spanish um, it's I'm really accepting this award on behalf of everyone it was a, a, a collaborative effort um, and I just like to say a special thank you at the end to uh, the person I overheard this morning by the booth saying oh he, he looks a bit like the crypt master um, because that's you know thank you to that person for keeping me grounded uh, <laughs> this this is wonderful thank you um, the game, the demo is on Steam, but the game is out on May the 9th. I can announce that now, I think. Um, so, you know, don't clap, no, don't clap, just, bu just buy it. We'll, uh, we'll be fine. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up. That was great. The Alt Control GDC Award is our salute to developers. Come on, give it up, give it up. <laughs> yeah. 
It's our salute to developers who dare to think outside the box. That's, that's my kind of people. And redefine what gaming can be. It's all about celebrating innovation and accessibility through alternative controllers that take gaming to new heights. Imagine this. As you know, I like to paint pictures. Imagine this. Developers diving headfirst into the world of experimental hardware. Crafting unique interfaces that challenge the norms of traditional gaming. It's about endurance in the face of technical hurdles. From designing custom controllers to exploring unconventional input devices that spark creativity and imagination. The process is like embarking on a thrilling adventure. Exploring novel ways to interact with games and creating experiences that immerse players like never before. It's about enhancing immersion, breaking barriers, and making gaming accessible to everyone. It's regardless of their background or abilities. Expertise in hardware engineering, human computer interaction, and out of the box problem solving is the magic behind the scenes. It's what leads to groundbreaking games that redefine the gaming landscape, opening doors to new possibilities, reimagining how we play and interact with digital interfaces. Hmm. To present the Alt Control GDC Award this year, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage Alt Control GDC organizer and Testament American Business Development Director, John Polson. Good evening, everyone. Every year is a huge and humble honor to organize the feverishly innovative exhibit, Alt Control GDC, which displays custom built controllers and bespoke games. On its 10th anniversary, I wanted to thank Simon Carlos for brainstorming this idea with me. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> and thank every GDC attendee for voting this exhibit so highly, allowing it to continue. Moreover, I wanted to thank all the developers who submitted, showcased, line wobbled, kept talking so nobody exploded, and filled the exhibits with so much joy this past decade at Alt Control GDC. Thank you. Now, for those of you who don't know Alt Control, if you're wanting to escape the hotel lobbies or otherwise craving a creative cleanse, I encourage you to hit the expo floor and try these beautiful tactile oddities and celebrate why we got into games. To capture our imaginations, to stimulate our senses, to challenge our motor and cognitive skills, and simply to play. Let's check out the finalists.
And the winner of the 2024 Alt Control GDC Audience Award is Chumo by the Chumo team at Art Center. Wow, thank you very much everybody, that's an audience award, so we are humble, so, so happy to be here. So, it's, uh, Chumo is a student project from our little program at uh, our center, uh, so it's a terrific job from all our students, little team of uh, eight students who work their best to, to deliver this experience, so, so, so happy about that. So a big thank you to the students, big thank you to our faculty, to Justin, our lead teacher on this and all the other faculty who has been doing their best to train our students. So uh, they're going to be graduating in a couple of weeks. So guys, <laughs> now is the time to go talk to, to them on our booth. So thank you very, very much. Uh, Justin, want to say a word? Hello. Okay. So um, this feels like a award ceremony sim. So not very real, but we wrote a speech while drinking wine right now. Uh, All Control GDC uh, is such a special place um, on the floor. It, it celebrates the weird, the different, the experimental, the exploratory, and we're so honored to be nominated amongst all the awesome projects along with us. Truly, such an amazing group and uh, so humbled to be here. Um, this is just a small fraction of the team. Uh, we wanted to take the other team members out there. Yell if you're there. Um, there we are. Demi, Isa, Jacob, Jingyi, Shauna, Terry, Xiao, Zifeng, you guys are amazing. Our faculty who also helped as well, Forrest and Simon, amazing. And the community that we are spreading at Art Center is just awesome. Uh, Christoph and the rest of the other faculty um, who prepared such an amazing bunch of students. Thank you guys all for making my job easier by teaching them the fundamentals to, to be awesome game designers and artists. And um, we also want to thank the loved ones who dealt with all of our sleepless nights and weekends to make this project actually happen. And we are honored to be here with everyone else um, to celebrate along with you all. Um, and we hope, that to catch, we hope to catch you all on the floor playing Alt Control, not just our game, but all the other games as well. Please visit us at Alt Control GDC. And thank you so much. And I really want to say thank you to all the faculty members that give us support and all my talented teammates over there. And I also really appreciate that the GDC can give us a chance to show us work and also show our magic of friendship. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Um, they said all what I want to say, but I still want to say thank you. Thank you for my parents, thank you for my teammate, faculty, and thank you all for being here. And come to play our game Chumo at uh, like tomorrow and Friday. We're so, so welcome. Thank you guys so much. Please welcome back your IGF host, Trinidad Black, to the stage. Visual art is a celebration of the divine inspiration that flows through artists and animators, bringing game worlds to life with breathtaking visuals and artistic expression. 
Imagine the journey of crafting visual magic masterpieces that capture hearts and minds. It's about enduring dedication, meticulous attention to detail, and countless hours devoted to rendering and refining visual styles. This process mirrors the journey of creation itself, a collaboration with the divine to weave immersive and visual captivating game environments. From concept art to character design, from environment modeling to lighting techniques, every stroke of the digital brush is infused with the spirit of creativity. Expertise in digital art tools, color theory, composition, storytelling, through visuals is like a testament to the divine gifts bestowed upon artists. Through the lens of color and form, games become canvases for emotive experiences that resonate deeply with players, evoking emotions that uplift and inspire, reminding us of the beauty and wonder that surrounds us. So here's to the visionary artists and animators channeling divine inspiration to create visual marvels that leave a lasting impact on our players' hearts. Your artistry reflects the beauty of creation itself, reminding us of the boundless possibilities where we align our creativity with divine guidance. The nominees are... Excellence in Visual Art. The nominees for Excellence in Visual Art are Anthology of the Killer, developed by the Catamites, Tommy Tone, A. Deegan. Clash, Artifacts of Chaos, developed by Ace Team. Published by Nacon, Edmundo Bordeo, Andres Bordeo, Carlos Bordeo, Juan Briones. Darkest Dungeon 2. Developed and published by Red Hook Studios. Little Goody Two Shoes. Developed by Astral Shifts. Published by Square Annex Collective. Antonio Lapos, Pedro Diaz, Christy Frisbee, Jessalyn Burns. Phonopolis. Developed and published by Amanita Design. Petra Filipovic, Eva Markova, and Otto Doskal. Vanba, developed and published by Visai Games. Sam Alcana. And the winner of the Excellence in Visual Art Award is Bonopolis. Um, thank you. Uh, I kind of feel like I just lost the ability to speak, kind of. My heartbeat is um, doing very funny things to me right now. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it's been like about five years since we were last here in the United States. And this is probably the most amazing, the warmest welcome back that we could have ever dreamed for. So um, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's also the first week that we've been showing our game to the public and we've just felt nothing but appreciations from all of you that have stopped by our booth and play the game. Um, so thank you all for playing, for coming, for giving us valuable feedback. Uh, you've heard the name of the main creative trio and the creative visionaries and artists behind the game, Petra, Eva, and Otto. Um, massive congratulations, not just to them, but the entire team of Phonopolis and the entire collective at Amanita Design who is um, 
helping us make the, feel, make the game feel as good as possible and look as good as possible and also sound as good as possible. And we hope we're not going to make you wait too much longer uh, to actually play the final game. So um, thank you so much. That was great. The Excellence in Audio Award is our way of shining a spotlight on the unsung heroes, audio engineers, composers, and sound designers who weave magic into every sound, enhancing gameplay experiences beyond imagination. Imagine diving into the world of sound where every note, every effect, every silence is carefully crafted to immerse the player into a symphony of emotion. The journey of audio creation is like composing a masterpiece. From capturing raw sounds to refining them into high quality and impacting audio elements that elevate the gaming experience. Endurance shines through in the countless hours spent recording, editing, mixing, mastering. Each step is a labor of love to achieve perfection. It's about creating music that sets the mood, designing sounds that affect the world and brings the world to life, and that seamlessly integrates audio into gameplay to enhance immersion. Expertise in audio software, musical composition, Foley artistry, and spatial audio techniques is the secret sauce behind the games with rich auditory experiences. It's what transforms gameplay into a sensory adventure, where every sound tells a story and every note resonates with players' emotions. So here's to the audio masters and sonic architects, crafting soundscapes that transport players to new realms and dimensions. Your expertise and de dedication add layers of depth to the gaming experience. Turn pixels into symphonies, immersing players into a world of sonic wonder. So here are your nominees. Excellence in Audio. The nominees for Excellence in Audio are A Highland Song, developed and published by Inco, Lawrence Chapman, Mozen Amini, Joseph Humphrey, and John Ingold. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive. Jakob Schmidt, Lucas Julian Lentz, Nico Antila. Nor, play with your food, developed by Terrifying Jellyfish, published by Panic. TJ Hughes, Maximilian Mueller, James Morrison, and Joey Paniello. Rhythm Doctor, developed by 7th Beat Games, published by 7th Beat Games and Indianova. Chia, developed by Awaseb, published by Kepler Interactive, A Shell in the Pit, and John Matz. Vanba, developed and published by Visai Games, Alpha Something, and Neha Patel. The winner of the Excellence in Audio Award is Rhythm Doctor.
Oh, um, wow. My, my heart is also doing funny things. It's uh, beating in 7-8 time, I think. <laughs> um, I, I wrote a speech. It's somewhere here. Thank you. I was, I was sitting here in these tables exactly 10 years ago, in 2014, somewhere around there, because our game got nominated for the student IGFs, the 2014 student IGFs. It was for Rhythm Doctor as well. <laughs> We've been working on this game for a while. Um, we, we didn't win back then. We lost to this game called Risk of Rain. <laughs> but that, that experience of being nominated made us realize we had something special. So here we are, 10 years of work later, finally with an award. <laughs> We've been waiting for so long. Yeah. Thank you. We're, we're happy enough to be nominated among such amazing other games and hope we can all stay in touch. Um, for the audio in particular, our sound designer, Celeste, isn't here today, but uh, yeah, this one's for you. Congratulations. And on behalf of the audio team, Celeste and myself, thanks to our collaborators and friends who worked on the music with us, uh, David Fu in the Imba Interactive, Ashwin Gobinath, Hamir and Kai Zawawi, Patricia, Patricia Taxon, Yo, and so many others. This award also, unfortunately, comes a year too late for G. Sim, uh, the voice of the nurse in Rhythm Doctor, and the singer in two of our songs. She was a kind enough friend to lend her talents to us, and we miss her dearly. We'd like to thank the IGF organizers, because that GDC in 2014 was where we met Giacomo, our lead programmer now. And you know, we, we've stuck together for 10 years, so great. <laughs> thank you to our publisher, Indinova, and the governments of Malaysia and Peru for the funding, AMDEC in Innovate Peru. I'd like to pass on some special thanks from our team members as well. Winston would like to give a shout out to his parents for their support, in spite of not, do, not knowing what he's doing. <laughs> Yakomo would like to thank his parents, brother, and everyone that trusted him that making games would be a, an actual viable career path. Kyle would like to thank his mom, dad, and his brother, Jack, for all their love and help along the way. Celeste thanks her mom and sister, Jane. Morph wants to thank their two best friends, Denny and Octavian, for always being by their side. Jenny. Thanks her partner, Octavia, for all her love and support and pushing her to be the best she can be. Alf thanks all our players and community creators for getting, getting us this far. Shout out to the RDL. And for myself, thanks to the whole team, including those who aren't here, Winston, Jose, JCI, Juan Tien, Nicalia, Alberto, Sora, and many more. Thank you to my beautiful wife, Diana. We got married this month. <laughs> Thanks for, thanks for letting GDC be our honeymoon destination. I'm sure it's, it's not the best destination. <laughs> thank, you, thank you to my parents for supporting my career path. I'm sorry I'm not an actual doctor, but look, we have an idea for work. <laughs> and our final thank you is to Nintendo SPD Production Group 1 for making Rhythm Heaven, the game whose shoulders our game stands on. While we are here, while we are here, we would like to remember the real doctors in Gaza trying to save lives in the worst conditions. Our hearts beat for you. Thank you so much. The Audience Award is our way of celebrating the heart and soul of gaming. The deep connection between players and developers that make each gaming experience unforgettable. Imagine diving into the world of players' preferences, community engagement, continuous feedback loops that shape the games we love. The journey is about understanding what makes players tick, engaging with communities like lifelong friends, and fine-tuning gameplay based on the pulse of player feedback. Endurance shines through in the dedication to creating experiences that not only entertain, but also evoke emotions, spark lively conversations, foster a sense of belonging within the game community, it's all about crafting games that become more than just pixels on a screen. They become shared experiences 
that bind us together. Expertise in player psychology, community management, and responsive game design is the secret sauce behind games that resonate deeply with players. It's what creates lasting memories, fosters loyalty, and ignites enthusiasm within the gaming community. Turning players into passionate advocates for the games they love. So here's, <laughs> amen. So here's to the game developers and community builders, forging connections that transcend virtual worlds and creating experiences that bring us closer together. Your expertise and dedication makes games not just a hobby, but a shared journey. It builds friendships. It builds community. It brings us together. The winner of the 2024 Audience Award is Ram. Random Access Mayhem. Speaking of doctors, I think I might need one now. Uh, thank you to our community. That's what this is about. Go ahead. Oh, oh you Sorry. want me to do the speech? Sorry, we weren't really expecting to win this one, actually. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, this award is a popularity contest, right? And um, we figured, you know, R Ram's not the biggest game here. It might not even be the best game here. But we do have a very loyal community. Um, <laughs> people who have uh, taken our little game and decided to push it beyond any threshold, which we really imagined it being taken to, people um, speedrunning it, people doing challenge runs. Um, I have to give a shout out to um, three particular members of our community, uh, JD, Timeless, Burger Minus, <laughs> for leading the charge in that regard. Um, uh, thank you to... Um, I, uh, I got up in front of every... So we're, we were nominated for Best Student Game. I got up in, every, uh, in front of every single class and asked everyone to scan a QR code and vote for RAM. And so this is another student award because the students really put in the work. So thank you to all the students at the University of Victoria. Because um, we were like, <laughs> it's really a, a testament to the, like, the, the communities that we build. And I think as game developers, it's really amazing to uh, reach out to people and touch people. And I think that as indies, we have a really uh, special responsibility to kind of push the boundaries. And the resonation uh, with the community is something that is so special. So anyways, I'm kind of freaking out. This is crazy. Ooh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so. Yeah, I, I don't want to come off as too precious or anything, but it's we're, as student game devs, we're young enough to the point where we, it's not much of an exaggeration to say that we've literally grown up playing games that have won this category in the past. And they are directly responsible for us pursuing the career of game development that we have. And um, to be spoken of in the same breath of them, to be on the same stage as them, is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, and thank you so much for that. Thank you. Give it up for Ram again. Come on. That's deep. <laughs> the excellence in narrative is our nod to the masterminds behind the captivating stories that keep us glued to our screens, eager to uncover every twist and turn. Imagine delving into the art of crafting rich character arcs, weaving intricate plot twists, and penning dialogue that breathes life into virtual worlds. The journey of narrative creation is like embarking on an epic quest. From world building and script writing to voice acting and crafting branching storylines that give players a sense of agency and meaningful choices. Endurance shines through in the countless hours spent developing characters with depth, crafting dialogue that resonates and creating worlds that feel alive with possibilities. It's about mastering storytelling techniques. 
exploring narrative structures, diving into thematic exploration to create games with narratives that not only tug at heartstrings, but also stimulate the mind. Expertise in dialogue writing, narrative structure, and thematic exploration is the magic behind games with narratives that resonate emotionally and intellectually with players. It's what turns games into immersive journeys of discovery, where every choice and consequence adds layers of depth to the player experience. So here's to the storytellers and narrative designers, crafting tales that transport us to realms of imagination and evoke emotions that linger long after the game ends. Your expertise and dedication makes gaming not just an escape, but a journey of discovery and reflection. Here are the nominees. Excellence in Narrative. The nominees for Excellence in Narrative are 1,000 Times Resist, developed by Sunset Visitor, published by fellow traveler, Natalie Tinian Gan, Remy Su, Natalie Tan, and Connor Wiley. A Highland Song, developed and published by Inkle. John Ingold, Joseph Humphrey, Natalie Clayton, and Anastasia Wyatt. Mediterranea Inferno, developed by iGuys, published by Santa Rogiona, Lorenzo Ridaioli, Pietra Rahi Riva, Alberto Putignano, and Arden Ripley. The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, developed by Deconstruct Team, published by Devolver Digital. The Wreck, developed and published by The Pixel Hunt, Corelli Moron, Florent Moron, and Sarah Elmele. Vanba, developed and published by Visai Games. Abi. and Narrative Design Award is Mediterranean Inferno. I mean, this is unbelievable. Thank you so much. So I'm really happy to see that such dangerous projects like ours can you know, still receive this level of recognition. Because for me, it's so important to uh, explore the cathartic power of art in these like, extremely horrible like, times we are living right now. Because I really want a world without fascism. So I mean, that's what we're going to do. And <laughs> yeah. And OK, so. I really want to thank my family first, because of course I'm Italian, so that's where I start from. But I also want to thank my chosen family in Milano. I really love you so much. I really can't wait to have a rave party together and get arrested, because that's it, Italy now, so yeah. And, <laughs> and also I really want to thank my other chosen family, which is Santa Ragione. So Pietro, Alberto, Riccardo, and Stefano, thank you so much for believing in this project. And also thank you to Arden for anything my English like your I adore you. I'm, I really adore you. So, I mean, really. Um, I mean, this is for all the people that believe that there's always another way to do stuff. So, yeah. I mean, thank you so much. Um, I. Uh, this is so surreal. Um, 
I, I want to say thank you to Lorenzo for, for trusting me to, to translate and to edit your words. Um, it, it really means a lot. Um, and thank you, Pietro, for, for bringing me onto the project. It, it means everything. And I just want to tell people um, it, it, there's a story inside you that someone else out there needs to hear. Um, even if you think it's weird or niche or too personal, someone wants to hear it and it's going to be important to them. So please tell it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I uh, would also like to thank the team that is watching back from home, um, um, Marina Rossi, uh, Ni Nicola Tedeschi, and Riccardo Reina, and also our longtime collaborators, Davide Colombi, Luca Francesco Rossi, Flaminia Grimaldi. Uh, really, we couldn't have made it without you. And also to our uh, partners at Fantastico Studio for handling the console ports of the game, and to our amazing team of translators, Itsuki Horiuchi, Thomas Faust, Felipe Mercader Martinez, Marielle Verrien, and of course, uh, Albert Chen and Claudia and Matteo from We Are Muesli. Um, and also to the extended community of developers, both international and Italian, that have supported us for the last 14 years. Um, oh, and finally, I would like to say to um, the platform holders and the digital stores representatives that are here tonight that you have a responsibility to create an environment in which the talent that we are celebrating tonight not just survives, but thrives. Thank you. The Nuovo Award is a way of celebrating the daring souls who redefine what gaming can be. Those who embrace the wild and the unexpected in their quest for innovation. Imagine diving into the realm of experimental game design, where creativity knows no bounds, no rules, they're meant to be broken. The journey is about courageously challenging norms exploring unconventional mechanics, and crafting experiences that provoke thought and inspire curiosity. Endurance shines through in the courage to take creative risks, innovate fearlessly, and venture into uncharted territories of game development. It's about conceptualizing abstract ideas, designing gameplay mechanics that defy conventions, and creating experiences that challenge players to see games in a whole new light. Expertise in conceptual art, experimental gameplay design, interactive storytelling, and artistic expression is the driving force behind games that spark dialogue, inspire curiosity, and push the boundaries of what games can achieve. It's what turns games into interactive art pieces that leave a lasting impact on players and the gaming industry as a whole. So here's to the game changers and visionaries. Pushing the boundaries of creativity and imagination. You know who you are. Your courage, creativity, and willingness to explore the unknown makes gaming a limitless adventure of discovery and innovation. Here are your nominees. Nuovo Award. The nominees for the Nuovo Award are 1,000 Times Resist. Developed by Sunset Visitor. Published by fellow traveler Lynn Cacho, Colin McDougall, Drew Redman, and Kodaya Nagawa. Anthology of the Killer. Developed by the Catamites, Tommy Tone, A. Deegan. Crypt Master, developed by Paul Hart and Lee Williams. Published by Acupara Games. Paul Hart, Lee Williams, and Surashu. Kevin, 1997-2077. to 2077. Developed and published by Kevin Du. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
25-26. Mediterranea Inferno. Developed by iGuys. Published by Santa Rogiona, Lorenzo Ridaioli, Pietro Rahi Riva, Alberto Putignano, Arden Ripley. Nidus. Developed and published by Caleb Wood. The Forest Cathedral. Developed by Wakefield Interactive and Brian Wilson. Published by Whitethorn Games. Unfortunately, the Anthology of the Killer team could not have joined us tonight, but they have sent us a message. Let's roll the tape. The Seamus McNally Grand Prize is our way of honoring the game that embodies the spirit of endurance, creativity, and excellence across all aspects of game development. Imagine embarking on an epic quest, from the initial spark of an idea to the final masterpiece that captivates players worldwide. The journey is about endurance, dedication, and the relentless pursuit of perfection, fueled by long hours, collaboration, and passion for pushing the boundaries of gaming. Endurance shines through the dedication to solving problems, iterating on ideas, overcoming challenges that arise along the way. It's about the collaboration between diverse talents, the creativity to innovate, the vision to create an experience that resonates deeply with players. Expertise in every facet of game development from gameplay and design to art, audio, narrative, and innovation is the secret sauce behind games that set new standards of excellence. It's about understanding players' experiences, crafting immersive worlds, and leaving a lasting impact on the gaming industry as a whole. So here's to the game developers who dream big. You can clap. Work tirelessly. <laughs> Inspire us with all their creativity and vision. How many game developers are in the room right now? Come on. I'm talking to you. Your dedication and expertise make gaming an adventure of limitless possibilities and leave a world-lasting legacy in the world of indie gaming. It is traditional for the previous year's winner of this award to present it, but unfortunately, Cosmo D of Betrayal at Club Low could not be here this evening. He did send all the finalists a, finalists a message, though. Let's roll the tape. No. Okay. Hello, my name is Cosmo D, Greg Heffernan. I won last year's Seamus McNally Grand Prize for Betrayal at Club Low, my game. And I got to play this year's nominees. Wow, they were good. Really interesting, really creative, really expressive. Really, you know, I left each game being like, this is different. This is pushing things in a different direction. Um, I was 
surprised. I was like, I'm going to just play this. And then I was like, oh, man, I can't stop playing this. So congrats to all the nominees pushing the medium forward. And the nominees are... Seamus McNally Grand Prize. The nominees for the Seamus McNally Grand Prize are 1,000 Times Resist, developed by Sunset Visitor, published by fellow traveler, Natalie Tinian Gan, Colin McDougall, Natalie Tan, and Kodai Yanagawa. A Highland Song, developed and published by Inco. Joseph Humphrey, John Ingold, Natalie Clayton, and Anastasia Wyatt. Anthology of the Killer, developed by the Catamites, Tommy Tone, A. Deegan. Developed by Geometric Interactive. Published by Annapurna Interactive. Yeppe Carlson, Jakob Schmidt, and Erwin Co. Mediterranea Inferno. Developed by iGuys. Published by Santa Rogiona, Lorenzo Ridaioli, Pietra Rahi Riva, Alberto Putignano, and Arden Ripley. Vanba, developed and published by Visai Games. Abi, Sam Elkana, Sharin Khan, and Tatsuya Morita Ahad. And the winner of the Seamus McNally Grand Prize is... Vespa! Hello, hello. Um, one second. This is uh, Sam Elkana. He can't hear us right now, but he's sick. Uh, he's the artist. Venba wouldn't be here without him. Uh, he's in San Francisco. I just couldn't make it today. Um, OK. So I want to start by using this platform to call for a complete ceasefire for the ongoing <laughs> for the ongoing horrific genocide that's happening in Palestine right now. Uh, making games is really, really hard, and I couldn't have done it without uh, Sam, uh, my team, my brother, my parents, uh, Pop Agenda, Laundry Bear, Ontario Creates, Victoria Tran, Eka, and so many more people. Um, and uh, I also want to say that I'm really happy to be in San Francisco this week uh, with so many peers who are so passionate about game development. But in this current climate of layoffs, I also know that a lot of talented people are not able to make it um, because it's either unaffordable or inaccessible. I would like to ask events like JDC to make more steps in making this a lot more accessible for devs who want to be here and learn and flourish. Thank you so much. Tonight, we've witnessed the power of passion, creativity, and sheer determination that fuels the indie game community. To all the nominees and winners in each category, you are the heartbeat of innovation and the soul of our industry. Your endurance in overcoming challenges, your expertise in mastering your craft, and your unique personalities, you can say that again, have inspired us all. To the best student game developers, you've shown us that dreams have no limits. And with perseverance, anything is possible. 
To the excellence in design honorees, you've crafted experiences that leave us breathless and eager for more. To the Alt Control GDC Award innovators, your ingenuity and your unconventional thinking have opened new doors in the gaming accessibility. To the excellence in visual arts, you've painted worlds of wonder and beauty that captivate our imaginations. To the excellence in audio maestros, you've composed symphonies of sound that transport us to realms of emotion and excitement. To the audience award recipient and, re and nominees, your ability to connect with players on the profound level has forged communities and friendships that enrich our gaming experiences. To the excellence in narrative storytellers, you've woven tales that touch our hearts and minds, leaving lasting impact. To the Nuova Award winners, your daring creativity and experimental spirit push the boundaries of what gaming can be, inspiring us to think outside the box. And to the Seamus McNally Grand Prize recipient, you're, you embody the epitome of excellence, innovation, and vision that propels our industry forward. As we conclude this evening, let us carry forward the spirit of creativity, passion, and resilience. That's what defines the indie game community. Congratulations to all the nominees and winners. You are the driving force behind the evolution of gaming. Keep dreaming, creating, and inspiring. Thank you for spending time with me tonight at the IGF Awards. Please welcome Frank Zivaldi to the stage. Hi, I'm Frank Zivaldi. I run a nonprofit called the Video Game History Foundation. Thank you. Thanks. Um, some of you might have seen this number before. Uh, last year we published a study on the availability of historical video games and we found that 87%, nearly 9 out of 10, are out of print and unsupported probably forever. To put that into context, that's somewhere between the availability of World War II audio recordings and the survival rate of American silent films. It's really dire. This is a problem. This should scare you. But there's something that scares me even more. Video game history is more than a collection of commercial products. To me, video game history is a collection of human stories, your stories. And even more so than the games, those stories are in danger of being lost. Our job at the Video Game History Foundation is to preserve these stories. I go to people's homes, I interview them. I dig through the boxes of the things that they've kept. And I preserve what's inside. Business records, correspondence, documentation, source code, photos, notebooks, sometimes entire games that never made it to market. Taken as a whole, material like this can tell us a whole lot about the people who kept it, even if they're no longer with us. This is how it's done. This is how history is preserved. In 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, when someone wants to tell your story, will you have a box? What'll be in it? How will you be remembered? What about the thousands of people over the past few months who might have been forced to move on from games earlier than they'd planned? Did they have an opportunity to start a box? Are they going to be remembered for the contributions they made? Are their names even going to be in the fucking credits? Look, man, everyone in this room is important. You're all a part of history. And I don't want any of you to be forgotten. If I have a message for you today, it's this. You're the curator of your own story. If you haven't already, I need you to start a box of your own when you get home. Whatever that means for you. It can be a cardboard box. It can be a drop box. Whatever works. 
And if you've already done that, man, get in touch. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage your host, Alana Pierce. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this year's Game Developers Choice Awards. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Alana, and I am unbelievably honored to be your host this evening. But I have to admit, sort of a bummer of a year to have been asked to celebrate the games industry for no particular reason. Mostly the record layoffs, though, so it's been great. Uh, it's honestly a really tough year to have had to have write this speech. I mean, people in this room have lost their jobs. People who attend GDC every year have had to cancel this year because being here at all is sort of an extravagant luxury that's difficult to commit to when you don't know when your next paycheck is coming. We've lost people with years of experience who worked hard to make some of the games that have been nominated tonight, but more importantly, we've watched our friends get laid off. We've seen how it impacts their families, their children, their Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry, I mean, I love the company. All, all companies. Uh, the stock market is actually the best thing to happen to video games. Okay, <laughs> that was close. Uh, but really, it's impossible to have the awards this year without acknowledging the immense talent that we've lost and the people who dedicated their lives to this industry that it effectively spat out because stock market arrow must only go up. Okay, that one was fine. In saying that, the honest framing here is that we're here tonight to celebrate those people, to celebrate all of the teams who work hard to bring people all over the world genuinely, some of the most memorable, enjoyable experiences of their lives. Thank you. My life is better because of all of you. Now, this is now never how you want to start a sentence. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I heard on Reddit that despite all of this, game devs are actually all very lazy and money hungry. They don't even really play video games. They hate games, in fact. If you're a programmer in this room and you chose to work in the video game industry for any reason other than because you love them, how's that plan working out for you? I don't know about you guys, but I personally chose to work in the games industry for the notorious job security. Or the work-life balance. I'm joking. It was for the unanimous and endless Twitter praise. They love me over there. Sometimes I wonder if we deserve it, though, because video games are like clearly abominations, like God didn't want them to exist. At any moment during development, a hundred things are broken all at once, and the only logical conclusion is that they aren't supposed to exist. They are demons. We claw from the code as an affront to nature, and somehow they eventually come out like completely against their own will. They're trying so hard not to get made, to do anything they possibly can to prevent creation, and we go, yeah, the next five years of my life, and see about that, you fucking punk. And then here they are. You cannot convince me that Baldur's Gate 3 or any of tonight's nominees are anything other than a defiant miracle against God. Which leads me to our first award of the evening, Best Technology. In spite of everything games do to defy their own development, these nominees have excelled in making systems, procedures, and tech that blew us out of the water in 2023. It's a job that anyone who doesn't do it can't possibly understand, and is simultaneously one of the most important parts of the whole development process. Here are the nominees for Best Technology. Best Technology. The nominees for Best Technology are Alan Wake 2, developed by Remedy Entertainment, published by Epic Games, Antti Kerminen, Tatu Alto, 
and Sami Hakkarainen. Baldur's Gate 3. Developed and published by Larian Studios. Marvel Spider-Man 2. Developed by Insomniac Games. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. I have another name for you. Craven. Him. Starfield. Developed by Bethesda Game Studios. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, developed and published by Nintendo. And the winner is The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has a lot of mechanics packed into it, like being able to freely attach objects to each other or being able to pass through the ceiling anywhere. And there is a lot of mechanics that, you know, these are ones that if you're as a developer, even if it did cross your mind, you might be a little hesitant to implement because it's just a lot of work. <laughs> But in the end, the temptation to actually do this and the thought that this might bring surprise and delight to players won over beyond the concerns of the challenge that, would, that we would be facing. And I'm extremely happy to have received this award in response to the decision we've made to take on that challenge. So on behalf of the development team, thank you very much for this honor. Please welcome to the stage, Harry Kruger. Games are an interactive medium. That means that there is rarely, if ever, a substitute for good gameplay. And at the heart of gameplay, there is always design. Design is often the exercise of setting constraints. It's the art of funneling the player's attention towards goals and decisions that feel meaningful, engaging, and satisfying. Good design has the ability to get inside the player's head, to make them see new and exciting possibilities, and to create a deep and rewarding experience that leaves players itching for that coveted one more goal. Great design is always something that should be celebrated. And on that note,
Here are the nominees that have demonstrated exceptional design during the last year. Best Design. The nominees for Best Design are Baldur's Gate 3, developed and published by Larian Studios. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive. Yeve Carlson, Martin Festerholt, Asker Kierkemann Strandberg. Dredge, developed by Black Salt Games, published by Team 17. Alex Ritchie, Joel Mason, Nadia Thorne, and Michael Bastions. Hi-Fi Rush, developed by Tango Gameworks. Published by Bethesda Softworks. John Johannes. Masaki Yamada. Yuji Nakamura. The Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Developed and published by Nintendo. Baldur's Gate 3. Hello, everyone. My name is Nick. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that it is a, a great privilege and honor to represent Larian work today here and to be recognized by our peers. But it is feeling very lonely up here alone. So I would like you to jog your imagination a little bit and I would like you to imagine 450 people standing behind me. They would be standing from one side to another about five rows deep. So that is our studio. Uh, design might be somewhere in my title, but at Larian Studios, everybody contributes to this design. Um, from Canada to Malaysia, people from all kinds of backgrounds uh, contribute ideas and inspiration uh, to what is Baldur's Gate 3 today. Um, I always delight in how um, our creative director and founder, Sven Winke, finds something that he has never seen and knew about in our game for the first time. Uh, it's amazing. Somebody sneaked in something. Dinosaurs! Why are there dinosaurs in this game? Well, uh, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of people, right, that you're imagining, but uh, Baldur's Gate 3 was not made in one day, and arguably it was not made in six years either. Uh, the ideas and the philosophy of Larian design has, have been developed for over 20 years, stretching back, way back, <laughs> into uh, into this game called Divine Divinity, um, an underappreciated gem, and I can gush about this game because I didn't contribute to it uh, because I was in middle school at the time. Um, something else we played in middle school around that time was a really exciting new RPG, revolutionary, and it was called Baldur's Gate. Um, one and two, and folks who worked on it, um, without their work, I, I wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here, there would be no Jahira, Minsk, and Balspawn saga, so they belong here <laughs> on, this, on this stage. And this brings us to the elephant in the room because we're talking about design in Baldur's Gate 3, and it's a D&D game. <laughs> so, of course, I want to shout out uh, lovely folks at uh, Wizards of the Coast, um, the creators of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and all of the other editions before them, all the way back to uh, Sir Gary Gygax, who started this whole thing um, 50 years ago. Um, 50 years, that's, um, that's around the time our creative director and founder Sven Winke was born. <laughs> Coincidence, butterfly effect, uh, we'll never know, we'll never know. 
So by now, the, the, whole, the whole stage is full of people, right? Uh, you can imagine this giant crowd, but this is all just professionals working on this game. But there is still a big, big crowd of people that I would like to thank for their direct contribution to the design of Baldur's Gate 3. And they, these people would not uh, fit on this stage. They would not fit even in this room. And I'm talking about our community. I love our community. They've been with us through a lot, through COVID lockdowns, through three years of early access. They've been inspiring us. Every time we ship anything, we go online and we go like, so <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> do they like it? Is it bad? Is it horrible? I love the memes. I love the fan art. I love the Reddit posts that you have to scroll through to read the whole thing, where they go with painful precision into how much better we could do. <laughs> and so uh, being a designer on Baldur's Gate 3 was a bit like being a rogue. So you have to stay very quiet, and you have to sneak around this, this giant crowd of extremely creative people and you have to listen very carefully to what they have to say and you have to to steal I mean uh, synthesize everybody's ideas into your own ideas Ta -da. so uh, I hope that um, Jan and future designers are watching this or maybe they don't know anything about us but that they will synthesize our ideas for their future creations. Um, go Rogues! Thank you so much. Please welcome back your host, Alana Pierce. I think he might have to give that speech a few more times tonight. Uh, our next award is always one of my favorites. We've established that again, despite what Reddit told me, and they are experts, so maybe I'm wrong here. Making games is pretty tough. Making your first game as a brand new studio is even tougher. Anyone who manages to release a game as a hero in my books, but these particular heroes did it for the first time in 2023, and what a start they had. Here are the nominees for best debut. Best Debut. The nominees for Best Debut are Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive, Yeppe Carlson, Jakob Schmidt, and Erwin Coe. Dave the Diver, developed and published by Mint Rocket, Jehu Wang, Chan Yi Wu, Lu Song Tsa and Andrew Kim. Dredge, developed by Black Salt Games, published by Team 17. Nadia Thorne, Joel Mason, Alex Ritchie, and Michael Bastions. Vanba, developed and published by Visai Games. Abi, Sam Elkana, Sharin Khan, Tatsuya Morita Ahad. Viewfinder, developed by Sad Owl Studios, published by Thunderful Publishing. Up. Those were their first games. It's absolutely nuts. The winner is Venba. Again, uh, uh, really, really nice to win this award again. Um, I often, uh, during making Venba, um, my favorite uh, Tamil movie director, uh, Vetri Maran, he would often say, uh, the more local you are, the more international you become. Um, I think Venba is a very, very local story. 
Um, and I'm really, really happy that it's resonated with so many of you. Thank you so much. Please welcome to the stage Osama Dorius and Rami Ismail. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rami Ismail. And I am Osama Dorius. And since 2021, the two of us have a games podcast called The Habibis, together with our third member, our dear Habibi, Fauzi Nesmar. And we wanted to explain to you for a moment why we agree with all of our games industry peers that chose Fauzi as the 2024 recipient of the Game Developer's Choice Ambassador Award. When I started in games development, I was not aware of any other Arab game developers. I'd simply never met one, none, nor had I ever seen an Arab name in the credits of any game. As I was growing up, I'd seen more Chris's and John's in the code department of a single video game than I'd seen Arab credit lines in my entire lifetime. I've been making games my entire life, from card games and board games when I was nine years old to eventually learning how to make games in Flash in my teens. But I had never considered a career in video games until I saw another Arab become a game designer. And, and that makes, that makes the, the dream of making games feel impossible for, for kids like us. Because surely if it was possible, I'd have heard of other people with names like ours doing it. So, with that in mind, it feels deeply remarkable to be standing here tonight as an Iraqi and an Egyptian to celebrate a Jordanian's efforts to make the, to make the global games industry a better place. Through my own career, I've come to believe that one of the greatest acts of resistance of our stereotype as Arabs and Middle Eastern people being the bad people, that one of the greatest acts of resistance that we have against primarily being represented as cannon fodder and bombing targets, that one of the greatest acts of resistance that we have against these horrors and playing out in real life, day after day, in our lands, in our region, to our people, in Gaza, one of the greatest acts of resistance we have as minorities against this dehumanization is simply to exist loudly. That one of the greatest acts of resistance as a minority in any space is to thrive. And boy, has Fauzi been thriving. <laughs> From his humble roots, being a part of the very first game development team in Jordan, to working on so many incredible games, including a Mario game. Not many of us can say that we've worked <laughs> on a Mario game. I, I, will, I will never forget Fauzi's excitement at getting to work at a Mario game. Best, that's not what, he, what we're here to celebrate. The Game Developers' Choice Awards define the Ambassador Awards as honoring an individual or individuals who have helped the games industry advance to a better place, either through facilitating a better game community from within or by reaching outside the industry to be an advocate for video games and help further our art. And who better to commemorate with this award than the very person who literally wrote the book on video games in Arabic? the first and only comprehensive Arabic language resource bringing our beloved craft to an entire segment of the human population for whom that knowledge was completely out of reach. 
Fawzi actually had to invent new Arabic words to describe game design ideas and concepts that simply don't exist in Arabic. As the Arabic proverb goes, إن تحدثت إلى رجلا بلغته يفهمها ستصل إلى رأسه وإذا تحدثت إليه بلغته ستصل إلى قلبه if you talk to someone in a language that they understand, it will reach their head. But if you talk to them in their own language, it will reach your heart. And in the many languages he speaks, Fauzi has been a mentor, a teacher, an advocate, an ambassador to the medium. And to the people that make games in every country he's worked in, and mind you, Fauzi's journey in games has taken him from Jordan to New Zealand, from Japan to Sweden, but in every country he's lived in or visited, you'll find stories of Fauzi's kindness, his energy, his humility, and his generosity. Over the past decades, he has turned from a kid realizing that someone, somewhere around the world, actually created the games he played and dreaming of having that job into someone who not only worked on games in every segment of the games industry, but someone who helps others achieve those very dreams, no matter where they are. And if that wasn't enough, and let's be clear, that's more than enough, Fauzi has a superpower. It's actually true. It is physically impossible to take a bad picture of Fauzi. <laughs> and believe me, I've tried. Every snap you take results in a GQ magazine cover photo. And if you don't believe me, follow him on Instagram and see for yourself. It, it's true, Fauzi Habibi, you are distressingly photogenic. As a games industry colleague, thank you for your boundless efforts and unrelenting work in making games a more inclusive space. As your friend, thank you for your thoughtful kindness and genuine generosity. And as a fellow Arab, shukran for existing and for thriving. Alfa mabruk, ya Fauzi. We love you, Habibi. So please join us in welcoming to the stage Fauzi Mesmar. <laughs> Hello. Um, there, were, there were a lot of examples contrary to the photogenic myths that those guys are talking about. <laughs> um, I can't tell you guys how surreal it is to be here, to be recognized by my peers. Standing on the stage today is a moment I wouldn't have even dreamed of. Um, first time I attended these awards, I was 22 years old, and I sat all the way in the back with my boss at the time, George Shomali. And I do remember that there was a column right there in front of us. I couldn't see the main stage. <laughs> I was watching the show mostly through the big screens. Shout out to everybody behind that column right now. <laughs> um, and I do remember I was so in awe and I'm thinking to myself, look at all these real game developers. Like, they all seem to know each other. They're joking around, and they're doing so in, a lot of inspiring things and acknowledging each other's achievements. It would be great if I, too, can be a real game developer one day. <laughs> Next to me on the floor was a box filled with, like, 360 demos of a game that uh, we were working on in Jordan at the time. And it's the one that George and I, we've been pitching to publishers back-to-back 30-minute -back meetings for the three-day leading to the ceremony. And as far as I know, that game was probably one of the first console games to be made in the Middle East. 
And though I've been making games for like five years at the time, and I've made several firsts with my uh, friends and comrades back home, I didn't think it amounted to much because I didn't see myself as a game developer. It's hard to do so when like, there weren't that many people that looked like me or a precedence of someone Arab that made it for me to imagine that I can make it too. And it pains me that there's a lot of people that look a lot like me and talk like me, born not so far from where I was born, that will never see the light of day and realize their dreams. The struggle of my people has been passed down to me for generations, but the hope of a peaceful future where everybody lives in freedom and dignity is what powers me to show up every day and be the best that I can be. Thank you. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my brother Firas, who is the best of humanity in one person and has been my rock. You being here means the world to me. I love you, little bro. <laughs> I also dedicate this award to my family, especially my late father and late grandfather, who both instilled in me the love of education and helping others. I grew up wanting to be the best version of both of them. My dad reading my book in Arabic and kind of getting what I do for a living for the first time <laughs> um, is a moment of pride that will stay with me forever. Rest in peace, Dad. Thank you for everything. <laughs> my sisters, Soha and Misho, I love you both, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you to uh, my dear friends, Khaled, Ala, Salem, Ruba, Afonso, Valeria, Yak, and Eric, and to my friends who are joining me here tonight, I love you all. Everything good that has ever happened to me was because someone took a chance on me. Someone believed that I was a real game developer and I could do the job. And there's so many of them that I want to thank, and I will do my best. Thank you, Khashashna brothers, Khalili brothers, Adnan, Samir Abbas, Usama Hussain, Siddhar Yatarawna, Yasser Abu Thuraya, Ziyad, Wajdi, Josef, and George Shomali for believing in me and for allowing me to be part of your history-making journeys. And for the many that have worked together uh, with me making games when everybody else thought that we are out of our minds. <laughs> Asmat and Zena, thank you so much for being part of that journey and for being here tonight. Thank you, Jerome, Gustav, Clelia, Trevor, and the rest of my New Zealand crew. You're amongst the first game developers that I've ever got to work with. And we had the time of our lives doing some crazy stuff. Um, thank you for always sticking by my side when things were rough and for being a family for me uh, when I was far from home. Gustav, thank you for being here. I love you like a brother. And I need to take a moment to thank my mentor, Hiro Masa Iwasaki. Hiro, I will always look up to you. Your impact on the Japanese games industry is evident on all of our colleagues your mentorship and friendship and unrelenting support, as well as your personal career journey is nothing short of inspiring. Iwasaki-sensei, kansha moshi agimasu. And now to the... <laughs> to several of my bosses, to Yves Gilmo, Mahi Sufi, Davide Suliani, Ahmed Salama, and the rest of the Global Creative crew, to uh, Oscar Gabrielson, Vidar, Johannes Lars, and Robert, and the other guys at DICE, um, Philip, Duncan, George, Trudolf, Abigail, and Seb, Humam, and the many other leaders, thank you for putting your trust in me. To the incredible design teams that I had this absolute honor and privilege to service, the hundreds of you across the world in Ubisoft, EA, ABK, Inesh, Atlas, Gameloft, I'm inspired by your passion and the work that you do every day uh, is so inspiring for me. I am forever proud of the games we ship together. To my students around the globe, I am so honored, uh, and I hope I honored you by pushing you in the right direction, and I'm always overjoyed and proud to welcome you to our industry as peers. Rami and Osama, I love you guys. Thank you for being an inspiration for me and many others. For the Habibis and the Habibatis out there, I hope your WhatsApp group filled with stream of flower pictures this evening. <laughs> So if you're sitting out there tonight and you can't see the stage because of that stupid column in front of you, <laughs> uh, know that you belong here. 
And if you're going through some hard times or have gone through some hard times as a developer, you belong here. I urge you that no matter where you are in your career or in your life, that you will take a chance on others, that you will help them with whatever you can afford to, no matter how little, because it will make somebody believe that they're a real game developer too. Shukran Jazeelan. Thank you very, very much. Please welcome back your host, Alana Pierce. Three of the most wholesome people I know. It's like hard to come off on stage after those three. Uh, huge congratulations again to Fozzie and thank you to Rami and Osama. Our next award is currently more precious than ever. To everyone who is nominated in this category or works in this field, I like you so much more than I've ever liked a single robot. And I say that knowing they're going to cancel me for it in 10 years. But I don't think you really realize how impressive the games industry's artists are until you request something and then the art team comes back and it's 10 times cooler than your brain could ever have imagined. Genuinely, every artist I work with makes me feel like I've never seen anything. <laughs> A potent mixture of awe and just comparative inadequacy. We don't deserve our artists, but I'm so thankful we have them. Please stay. Here are the nominees for Best Visual Art. Best Visual Art. The nominees for Best Visual Art are Alan Wake 2, developed by Remedy Entertainment, published by Epic Games, Jana Polkinen, and Ansi Mata. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive. Erwin Co., Miki Storoska, Mikkel Stenson, Jakob Agerholm Jonsson. Final Fantasy 16, developed and published by Square Enix. Naoki Yoshida, Hiroshi Takai, and Hiroshi Minagawa. Hi-Fi Rush, developed by Tango Gameworks, published by Bethesda Softworks, Kosuki Tanaka, Kaita Sakai, and Yun M. Watanabe. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, developed and published by Nintendo. Good evening. Uh, congratulations to all the other nominees. Everybody did excellent work. But we're very happy to win, uh, accepting this on behalf of our esteemed, lovable art director, Janne Pulkinen, who's, and the entire team back home in Finland. And not just the art team, but the entire dev team, everybody at Remedy, and of course, the fabulous Northlight Engine and Tools team that enables us to put all those lovely pixels on the screen. So thank you for them as well. Kyle, do you have some magical words? No, thank you. Uh, no, honestly, the Remedy team are amazing. Uh, Yanni Polkina, as you mentioned, uh, Ansi Mata. Like, we've done a lot of live action work in this game and trying to find the visual identity using live action and blending it inside the game engine was something that we really pushed hard on, and he was a key part of that, so I just want to thank him too. And as, as Thomas said, like, the whole art team, uh, Nazareno, lead environmentalist, 
John, Lead, Characterized, Ron, Hard Servant Artist, Damian, Lighting Artist, Johannes, VFX Artist, all of the artists at Remedy, you're amazing. I uh, love working with you. Thank you. I also want to give a shout out that everybody has had incredibly powerful and excellent speeches, so it had to end at some point. But thank you. <laughs>
so that you have to go through the same cycle over and over and over. Right? So, because it really pisses me off. Anyway, thank you. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, I do have to talk about the narrative, though. Uh, <laughs> um, the narrative of Baldur's Gate 3 has been a very complex process to create. It is a collaboration of an incredible amount of people uh, going from uh, the writers, obviously, uh, to the cinematic team, uh, to the scripters, uh, to the QA team giving us feedback, all the way to our players telling us like, what we did wrong and why Shadow Hearts should say this thing and not say that thing. And so um, it is that collaboration and the, the, the sheer pursuit of trying to get players to really immerse themselves that made the narrative of Gate 3 possible. Uh, it took us a very, very long time. I hope it never is going to take so long again, because it was really long. Um, but uh, this is incredibly appreciated. Uh, we, uh, we worked very, very hard on this, so I know that the team uh, back home and sitting here is going to be thrilled with this award, uh, which is appreciated by its peers. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please welcome back your host, Alana Pierce. Back when I lived here in San Francisco, I used to play this game where I'd go on a walk until I overheard at least one tech word being used in conversation, like a tech buzzword. Synergy, disruption, distributed cloud, automation, agile, multi-experience. I still don't know what that means. Then Pokemon Go came out, and my walks were much more about catching Pikachus with different little hats, and that was way better. But the next award is for something that sounds like a buzzword, and frankly is in a lot of app development, but in the games industry, which is still incredibly new in the grand scheme of entertainment media, it genuinely has the power to shape every game that comes next. These are the games that have the power, the innovation, to shape our medium, to inspire other studios, to challenge what we think of when we think of video games. It's so much more than Pikachu in a cute little hat. Here are the nominees for Best Innovation. Innovation. The nominees for the Innovation Award are Baldur's Gate 3, developed and published by Larian Studios. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive. Jeppe Carlson, Jakob Schmidt, and Mikkel Svensson. Hi-Fi Rush, developed by Tango Gameworks, published by Bethesda Softworks. John Johannes, Yuji Nakamura, Kaito Zakai, and Shuichi Kobori. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, developed and published by Nintendo. The Making of Karateka, developed and published by Digital Eclipse. Chris Kohler, Mike Micah, Bao Calvin Vu. Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you. 
ですからこのような賞でそれを評価していただいたことを大変嬉しく思います That, そしてこのイノベーションという言葉はこの「ゼルダの伝説」「Tears of the Kingdom」ではもう一つの意味を持っています。And in Legend of the... Excuse me. Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, the word innovation has another meaning. This is because the game was built with the intent and desire to not only provide innovation but also embrace the innovative gameplay by players. It really is, and it really is the combination of the player's innovative gameplay that really completes the game experience. So, on behalf of the development team, thank you very much for this award. Please welcome to the stage Bryant Francis. Good evening, everyone. Every year, the teams at Game Developer and GDC work in tandem to document and memorialize those in our community who have passed away. Tonight, I invite you to share in our process with three simple words. Tell their stories. Telling stories about those we've lost is more than just a matter of record keeping. It's a ritual that shows they are still a part of our community. We can tell their stories through our words, our deeds, and even our art. We may leave an in game monument for players to find. We may think of their favorite color when painting a landscape. We might name a character in their honor. We remember the lessons they left us with. And share them with those in our lives who need them most. So, tonight, if there's someone you wish to honor, someone who isn't here with us anymore, all you have to do is tell their story.
Break them out once or twice a year when things get tough. Play them again. Remind yourself why you're excited, why you are here. Thank you. Please welcome back your host, Alana Pierce. There's no way to transition out of that that isn't a little sad, so let's just do it. Uh, into our next award, this one was voted for by all of you specifically. The people in this very room or walking the halls of GDC this week. We don't technically have nominees because all the titles are eligible for this year's Audience Award. And the winner is Baldur's Gate 3. Wow, uh, thank you everybody for voting for us. There's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole lot of you um, who played our game and I'm so happy that it resonated with so many of you. So thank you very, very much for voting for us. The publishing team on, in Larian is, we're a small bunch and we need all of you to keep talking about our games. So thank you very much. Please welcome to the stage, Leanna Rupert. <laughs> Finally a mic that's my size. Yay! All right, let's be honest here. Right now, we all need a little bit of light. And luckily for us, we work in an industry that can provide that light for each other and for those that enjoy the stories we tell all over the world through impactful games that leave a lasting impression. For this year's Social Impact Award, we're celebrating those games that go above and beyond to put a little light back into the world in an effort to make it just a little bit better of a place for all, which is important. And no, it's not just about making a snazzy tweet here and there, but actually putting a genuine foot forward through breathtaking gaming experiences that make a loud and proud difference for the better. So which game said the beacons are lit, Gondor calls for aid? The nominees for the Social Impact Award are... Social Impact. The nominees for the Social Impact Award are... The Space for the Unbound. Developed by Mojican Studio. Published by Toge Productions. Dimas Nofan Delfiano, Eka Pramodita Muharam, Elwin Lysander, and Brigitte Reina. Assassin's Creed Mirage, developed by Ubisoft Bordeaux, published by Ubisoft, Stéphane Boudot, Jean-Luc Salo, Sarah Beaulieu, and Raphael Weyland. Baldur's Gate 3. Developed and published by Larian Studios. Terra Mill. Developed by Free Lives. Published by Devolver Digital. Jonathan Hao Yun and Sam Alfred. Vanba, yeah. developed and published by Visai Games, Abi, Sam Elkana, Sharin Khan, and Tatsuya Morita Ahad. And the winner is Venba.
Um, genuinely running out of things to say at this point. But um, I first, um, when I first had the idea for Venba, I texted uh, my friend Sam, uh, the artist uh, on the game, and uh, he really liked it. And it was just that spark that started the whole game. Um, I had a really, really hard time getting Venba published or funded. But once again, it was the audience reacting to the trailer and uh, all the materials we put out that helped us uh, make it uh, proper and show that there is a market for this game. I think um, when your game gets funded, people look at something that's similar to it. Uh, but as soon as you start tracking the market, you fall behind it. So it doesn't give space for something that's new or interesting. Um, so that being said, I think um, for Venba specifically, now we, when I pitched the idea to Sharon, uh, she said this is the kind of game that might make people call their moms after they start after they finish playing it, um, and it that happened a lot. But it also led way to it. It was this weird new genre where it's a game you play with your mom, um, and that's not something we ever expected. And you can't expect these kind of reactions or predict for it. Um, so you just have to say through to the story you want to tell. Um, yeah, Sharon, do you want to? I'm tired of speaking. Do you want to say something? Thank you. Please welcome to the stage, Austin Wintery. Speaking as a composer, the single most difficult thing is to write music that is essentially instantly recognizable. When we're lucky, we do so once, maybe, in our career. And in those instances, it usually feels like it happened essentially by accident. But tonight's honoree proves that some people simply just have a gift for this and can manage this rare feat repeatedly over a long and storied career. Yoko Shimomura has worked on a massively eclectic range of games from classics like Street Fighter II, Super Mario RPG, Parasite Eve, Legend of Mana, and more recent games like Xenoblade Chronicles, Final Fantasy XV, and Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. In addition to an incredible video game portfolio, she has performed in bands, her work's been celebrated by uh, major orchestras throughout the world, and she has lent her music and talents to charity recordings. Her contribution to the game industry and music communities alike are indicative of a spirit that is both bold and generous. Shimomura-san was born in Japan and played piano from a very young age, eventually composing her own music. She attended the Osaka College of Music and upon graduation, because she loved gaming, decided to send samples of her work to various video game companies. Capcom invited her for her first audition and interview and despite this being a not particularly popular choice among her family and instructors, who shared that all too common feeling that games were a trivial waste of time for someone of her talent, Shimomura-san remained focused. The doors that opened not only set her on the remarkable career path that we celebrate today, but indeed led to the creation of music that we are all the better for having experienced. So please help me welcome to the stage the 2024 Game Developers Choice Awards Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Yoko Shimomura. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> wow, I'm really nervous right now. Thank <laughs> you. 
ここサンフランシスコは実は30年以上前に私が初めての海外で訪れた場所です今回この賞をいただくために戻ってまいりました Good evening, everyone. It is, a it is truly an honor to be here today to accept this prestigious award. Thank you all so much. It's actually been more than 30 years since I was last in San Francisco. San Francisco was actually the first place I visited outside of Japan, and I'm honored to be back here today to accept this Lifetime Achievement Award. 36years ago, I started this job at the 音楽が好きでゲームを遊ぶことが好きなどこにでもいるようなありふれた一人の若い人間でした夢に満ちあふれゲーム音楽制作の仕事を始めたもののその後は厳しい時期が続きましたあまりにも私はゲーム音楽を作るということをそして作曲をするということを知らなかったのです自分の力のなさに苦しみこの仕事を何で選んでしまったのか私にはできない毎日泣きながら落ち込んでばかりでした明日こそ会社を辞めようそんなことばかり考えていましたしかしなぜか辞めることができませんでした36 years ago when I first began working as a composer I was an ordinary young woman who loved music and playing video games While I was able to achieve my goal of becoming a game composer, I was soon confronted with a very difficult period of my life. I didn't really understand how to compose game music or how to compose music in general. During these tough times, I would cry to myself every day, overcome by feelings of depression and hopelessness. I felt weighted down by my lack of ability. Maybe I just wasn't cut out to be a game composer. What had, I, what had I gotten myself into by choosing to pursue game music? I would often say to myself, that's it, I'm quitting tomorrow. However, for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to quit. So, in the last few years, I was able to do it. 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 たった一つでもいいから自分が作曲したと言えるファミコンのゲームを残そうそれまで頑張ろうと、えー、少しずつ意識が変わってきました The tough times continued but at a certain point I rediscovered something about myself that I had lost track of Music was my passion and I made the choice to become a game composer If for whatever reason my career as a composer wasn't meant to last forever, I wanted to at least tough it out until I shipped one game for the NES. From that point, my outlook slowly began to change. So, I was able to get the first one 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 to get the first one. それからもう一作品、もう一作品と続けていった結果が今につながっています。Finally, that day came. My first game shipped. Sure, it wasn't a runaway success, but I was personally very satisfied at having made it to the finish line. And then it hit me. I now wanted to release one more soundtrack. After that soundtrack, the same feeling came back. Once again, I wanted to do one more game soundtrack. Just one more time, and again, and again, and again. And to this day, the cycle has continued. This is the Yoko Shimomura standing before you today. Thank you so much. 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 同時に非常に残酷なものです時には全然曲が作れなくなってしまい自分の力のなさを思い知り音楽が好きなのに全てを捨てて逃げ出したいと思うこともありますしかしまた非常に辛い時に自分を救ってくれたのも音楽なのです私はその手が届きそうで届かない振り返ってくれたと思ったらそっぽを向かれてしまう
なのに気がつくといつも近くにいる音楽という存在にまるで永遠にかなわない片思いをしているような気分ですだからきっと私の思いが続く限りずっと続けていけるのだと思っています Music has the ability to heal people and give them the strength to live. But it can also have a darker and more cruel side to it as well. When I'm in a creative rut and experiencing severe writer's block, those feelings of uselessness resurface. There are times when I just want to throw music in the trash and run away from it all, despite the fact that I love music so much. However, music also gets me through difficult times. It almost feels like a one sided love affair, like something I want so badly but just can't have. When I think that music might be looking right at me, I try to meet its gaze, only for it to quickly look away in another direction. But I know deep down that music is never too far away. Music is always a, love, a one sided love affair. While this sounds counterintuitive, it's actually what allows me to continue composing music. 今私がここに立てているのは私の行きたい道を応援してくれた両親そして先輩方仕事仲間友人家族私を支えてくださる皆様がいるからですたくさんの方々に支えられているから今の私があるのだということを強く実感しています I was able to embark on the path I chose for myself as a game composer thanks to everybody who has been there for me, including my parents, mentors, colleagues, friends, family, and all who have supported me and my work. I couldn't have made it onto this stage all by myself. It's thanks to having so many supporters that I stand before you here today. ご視聴ありがとうございました。私が書く音楽が少しでも彩りを添えられたる幸いです。以上をもちまして受賞のご挨拶とさせていただきます。本日は本当にありがとうございました。And also to those who have listened to their soundtracks. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I hope and pray that the game industry continues to evolve and all gamers in the world live prosperous lives. I hope my music can provide color, even if just a little bit, in all of your lives. It has been an honor to greet you all tonight. Thank you very much. Please welcome back your host, Alana Pierce. Congratulations, Yoko. Unbelievably well deserved. Uh, we only have two awards left, everyone. Look at us go. I kept it pretty quick, um, at least faster than a Baldur's Gate 3 b e s x speedrun. Probably, I don't know, that game's like 150 hours minimum, which, flawless segue incoming, is a lot of audio. Our final award tonight before Game of the Year is Best Audio. These are the games that delighted, terrified, enticed, or assisted us all through sound. It's one of those things that's so often underappreciated because if it's done well, it's seamless and organic and it sucks you in almost like nothing else can, but tonight, we're appreciating it. Here are the nominees for Best Audio. Best Audio. The nominees for Best Audio are Baldur's Gate 3, developed and published by Larian Studios. Hi-Fi.
by Rush. Developed by Tango Gameworks. Published by Bethesda Softworks. Shuichi Kobori, Makoto Yamaguchi, and Masatoshi Yanagi. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Developed by Insomniac Games. Published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, developed and published by Nintendo. Ranba, developed and published by Visai Games, Alpha Something, and Neha Patel. Rush. I should not be accepting this award. I'm accepting this on behalf of the fantastic audio team we have at Tango Gameworks, um, specifically Kobori-san, who's our audio director, uh, Yamaguchi-san, who's our, our lead sound designer, uh, Yanagi-san and Uritani-san, and our, also uh, the Glass Pyramids who helped us con uh, make the streamer mode soundtrack. And again, thank you to all the artists who contributed their work so we can have this fun experience. Um, this. I, to me, this award is not just about the music, it's about the, all of the audio design. And um, we pitched this, and I pitched this game, going back to my roots of, I like to play, li play live music, and there's a very visceral feeling that you got when playing music live that is very hard to describe for people who never experienced it. And I wanted to give people that, um, that ability to do so, even if they were not musically able to do so. And so we tried really hard. It was an extreme effort to get teams who never knew what a quarter note was or a beat was to finally make animations to that stuff. And to be recognized for that is unbelievably rewarding. So thank you for everyone who voted for us. So thank you so much. Alrighty, everyone, we are at the final award of the night. The big one. And this was such a competitive year for this. 2023 had so many incredible games, genuinely one of the best years in the history of the medium. So to anyone who released anything in 2023, whether you were nominated or not, congratulations and thank you again. Without further delay, here are the nominees for Game of the Year. Game of the Year. The nominees for Game of the Year are Baldur's Gate 3, developed and published by Larian Studios. Cocoon, developed by Geometric Interactive, published by Annapurna Interactive. Yeppe Carlson, Jakob Schmidt, and Erwin Koch. Dave the Diver. Developed and published by Mint Rocket. Jehu Meng, Chan Yi Wu, Wu Song Tso, and Kiop Chang. Dredge. Developed by Black Salt Games. Published by Team 17. Joel Mason, Alex Ritchie, Nadia Thorne, and Michael Bastians. Marvel's Spider-Man 2, developed by Insomniac Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, developed and published by Nintendo. And the 
winner is Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> So the bad news is the speech writing has not progressed, so, uh, and I really, um, I need to thank over 2,000 people who worked on this other than these fantastic people and the 450 people within at Larian. Uh, I'm always afraid if I do that I'm going to have to wrap it up. Uh, so um, we've been in a cave for a very long time, you can maybe see it. Uh, working on Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, coming here and really in the last uh, months as, as we've been uh, getting rewards uh, for the work that the team has been doing uh, we had a, a lot of people come to us and tell us how much the game meant to them and how it changed their lives and just walking here in San Francisco there were so many people that came to me which is sometimes problematic uh, but it's been uh, incredible uh, to hear players experiences and I think uh, that is the biggest reward of them all, is to hear from your players uh, that they're having so much fun, uh, what it means to them. And I think all of you have that when you make your game, and you get players that come to you and tell you, hey, that really meant something, or that gave me a moment, and that was at the time that I needed it, you were there. And I think it's the, the biggest reward of all, oh, sorry, uh, biggest reward of all of them for, for game developers. And so um, you should thank all of yourselves for creating that and giving that to the players and um, we are just but an example of what you are all doing uh, together. So thank you very much, uh, it's an incredible uh, honor to be standing here, I never thought we were going to be here uh, getting this award when we were making this game because I thought people were going to hate us uh, for making it because it was such a legacy. Um, I do want to thank all our partners that work together with us, uh, together with the team and uh, yeah I didn't prepare a speech so you can notice so Thank you, uh, and until, yeah, thank you, I guess. <laughs>